Hey, how's it going, everybody? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey. Hey, Nick, HD. Excellent, hey, excellent tribute. Yep. yep. The only show where we recognize the true genius. Love that the intro. Products. We should, we should be clear that whenever Nick does these intros, we're not privy to what he's going to do. So we're laughing as hard as everyone else. And it's a big surprise to us all. So. Yeah, this is a... Uh... I wanted to do something a little different than last time. So change, <laughs> change it up. Still stick with the theme of a music-based se- salute. But, uh, yeah, uh, how's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully the stream holds up. I don't know why it's yelling at me for a low stream rate, but whatever. Um, anyway, what are we doing tonight? Took all these notes. About something. We're, we're talking about the uh, the at games Sega Genesis. Oh, that's right, that's right. Finally, the at game Sega Genesis gets the review that is due. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, what you got there, Steve? What are we re- What are we reviewing? I thought we were reviewing shows. Oh, that's right, that's right. We're reviewing the review shows of the at games. Ah, there you go. That's right. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Notes are. I have so many notes here. It's hard to keep track. Uh, yeah, let's see. What are people saying in the chat? Stutters from time to time. Let's see if I can up the the bit rate a little bit. I don't know if that'll help. Anyway. So, so- yeah. Go ahead. So while you're doing that, Ace, um, my Mega SG is supposed to ship today, but I live in the North Pole, so I'm just displaying the next best thing I have in my basement, which is the App Games Genesis. I'm displaying the definitive Model 2 Sega Genesis, complete with the cartridge of choice, HD RetroVision test software. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I can never get to the end of that one no that's infinite loop (laughs) anyway yeah so we're here to review the reviews we don't actually care about the product we care about what everyone's saying about the product on their way to achieve the most number of views so uh who do you guys want to start out with today we got 10 reviews to review that's a good question uh how about the video is stuttering pretty bad, huh? I noticed that my bit rate keeps like jumping between two thousand and four thousand. Are you doing Windows updates at the same time again? No. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll just well, have to live with it. Nobody's watching anyway. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll go. We'll uh, we'll start. Uh, okay, somebody in chat suggested Metal Jesus. That's a good jumping off point as any. All so right. So the Metal Jesus rocks review. We got a picture here. Throw that up on the screen. Oh, there he is. So what do you guys think of the Metal Jesus review? I. <clears throat> I thought it was pretty solid. Metal Jesus has um, a huge library of things, so he does a great job of throwing stuff at it that traditionally breaks other clones, I guess. Yeah, and and, and I like that you mentioned clones because out of the, most of the videos that we've seen, I think Metal Jesus is one of the only ones that actually compared it to other clones and not just compared it to the original hardware yeah you compared it to the retron 5 yeah um so yeah it was solid i appreciated that uh, can... uh i i liked the or right, you go ahead i was gonna say um i don't i think he was one of the people that didn't mention whether it was a review unit or he bought it but i think we can assume it was a review unit that's just like a nitpick i have with all these most people actually this time did a great job 
Probably because they watched our Super NT review show, review <laughs> show, and watched <laughs> me complain about it um, when people don't state that. Um, That's right. We did have 10 views on that last yeah. one. <laughs> so it must have just been all the things we reviewed. <laughs> It's right. I mean, when I'm watching a review of something of a product, I really like to know whether that person got it for free because that that in, I yeah. feel that influences their decision based on whether they're going to recommend it or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be clear, like we said last time, I don't care if that people got stuff for free. I think people can do objective reviews they got for free. I mean, almost everybody here got theirs for free. And that's totally cool. It just should be disclosed up front, you know. Um, anyway, back to the to the yeah. actual review itself. Um, yeah, he tested it on on homebrews well, and and stuff like. Well, that. you you mentioned he uh, compared it with the. Uh, you mentioned he was comparing it with something else. He compared, he, he compared it? It to the Retron Five. Yeah. Retron Five. Okay, and then the other thing that was unique, I thought, and I, it was the only one in these videos, is he actually compared the output to composite output. Yeah. Which, that... Did I you, actually like that. Did you like that? Yes. I, so everybody seemed, other than, um, what, uh, My Life in Gaming definitely did, and Mo Modern Vintage Gamer did OSSE stuff, but not not everyone went the level of like comparing it to a, high, a, a alternative high quality solution. I, I guess I, I I just I thought it was worth comparing to a typical clone console, which would just normally give you composite output. Yeah, yeah that's right. I guess. That's fair. Um, so I, I like that. Um, the problem I had with it though was he initially shows off Earthworm Jim on composite versus the Mega SG output, and that was a prime opportunity to to just point out really quickly the the uh, dither blending that the composite did versus mm -hmm. the super crystal clear on the mega sg and that was not pointed out so i was not a there's a missed opportunity i thought because that's one of the reasons why you show the composite i or one of the i thought the benefits of showing composite was to show that aspect of it for sure yeah that that is a, a really good point um he also compared audio from a model 2 sega genesis yeah which i feel like a, in my opinion there's only two reasons to do that you, one you're not aware of the fact that the model 2 sounds like shit and the model 1 is like the more accurate comparison or you're intentionally using <laughs> The, the model 2 to make the sg sound better i don't think it's actually that case i think maybe just didn't realize that, that that's the case but if you're going to do this comparison accurately um like modern vintage gamer did he used the model one um right. yeah but no that, one actually specified which board rev they were comparing it to and that makes a difference right yeah because there there is a decent board rev of the model 2 um and most likely it's not that one. Yep. But uh, let's see. He also showed Sega CD test, SMS. He demoed UltraCore. Um, yeah. He showed the pound cables, which I <laughs> did not look good in my opinion. Um, maybe I'm biased. Um, but yeah, I, I thought overall it was pretty good. Uh, I think he did a good, good level of overview of the menus for like your average person yeah um yeah i tried lots of games try i think he also tried that uh, three in one uh hyperkin thing and pointed out that the game gear slot wasn't working yeah um so he, he tried a lot of stuff that's typically what he does though so yeah um um one thing i don't know if it, it was just the unit that he got but um, or I don't know what the default font is, but that lowercase font is hard to read. So if you're navigating the menus trying to show the audience, I did not like the lowercase font, um, or at least show how to change the hit. 
Yeah. Because it was, it was hard to to follow him while he's going through the menus on the lowercase font. Yeah. Um, the other thing I had was he made this strange statement that the homebrew games he used run solely due to it being an FPGA. Which I thought, yeah, you know, again, it's another... Yeah, I mean, that goes to his, like, he repeated the phrase, this is not emulation, uh, a number of times. <laughs> oh, which, yeah. as people may know, kind of rubs <clears throat> us the wrong way, because it's just, that's a, a byproduct of Analog's marketing more than anything else. It's, it's nothing to do with the fact that it's an FPGA. It's the implementation. Yeah, that's right. Um... And then I guess the last thing was, and this is pretty much everybody except for two uh, of the people, I, I guess I'll mention it every time, is when they show the scan lines, they show it on a 1080p output and like on a non-integer scale, so they look terrible. Yeah, yeah, I know that too. Um, so there was only two people who demoed it correctly, actually. <laughs> everybody yeah. else did it wrong. Yep. All right, let's um, let's jump. Right, uh, unless we have anything else. Yeah, because we got nine others to go through. So. I, I I one last thing is I like how at the beginning he showed a good overview of the mechanical, like the actual size of the unit and stuff. Like that. So that's it. Cool. So let's jump to modern vintage gamer since he is also a three-letter acronym, <laughs> um, and that's the only reason why. Made sure to pick the most glamorous uh, screenshots I could for everybody, so I hope you all appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Modern Vintage <laughs> Gamers is probably my second favorite um, review, actually. I agree with that. I would say yeah, either second or tied for first. He, um, yeah. he mentioned he got a review unit. He did a nice history lesson up front and kind of yes. interwove history throughout it um, what a, something i liked about modern vintage gamers is that he specifies it's a clone he calls it a clone throughout the video yeah I, a lot of people called it a clone though i, I thought that was kind of common not i don't know not everybody no i, I think yeah, it, may, it, you it may have stood out when people called it clones yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's well, um well, he his stood out because he compared it to other clone consoles. That's right. Well, yeah. Yep. Which was which was good. Um, one of my favorite, besides the wind windjammer shirt, um, <laughs> was I liked the shots of the TV and the console like in front of it, mm. not just the screen cap of what's going on, but yeah. showing the actual TV running. I really like that a lot. I, I already mentioned this, but I really like the fact that he did the audio comparison correctly. Um, and, he went, and, he, and he did it first. I like how he jumped into audio first, actually, because that's the yeah, main a, problem. With clones, there's there's a couple the of people that I think deserve to be shouted out for that, um, for focusing more on the audio than the video. Because like at this point, the video on these... Is probably going to be really good, yeah. and audio is like the thing that trips up Genesis all the time. So, so something else that Modern Vintage Gamer did that no one else did except for one other, and I noticed this because I'm Canadian because I paid a hell of a lot of money to get this shipped to Canada. Right, Modern Vintage Gamer pointed out that the shipping costs are astronomical. Uh, yeah, and I was actually very disappointed that only two people mentioned the shipping costs. And a lot of it was due to most of these people did not actually have to purchase it. Yeah. So they didn't have to go through the <laughs> checkout. The and same see. thing that happened with the Super NT. They just they see the hundred ninety dollar sticker price and forget that they were charging like thirty bucks to ship this tiny little box. Um, and for Canadians, way worse. Um, oh, like a, roughly fifty bucks shipping, and then another fifty. For duties yeah brokerage fees yeah yeah he, uh, but he, he, oh, he also had a unique a unique choice of uh test games 
Yeah, he had the tech yeah. demos that he showed, which I guess are things that were created more recently to exercise some hidden features of the hardware and then tend to break the clones because they're not designed around that. So that that was really cool. But, but other other uh, showed the the uh, the demo thing. But just, I'm just saying in general, there were games that he used that nobody else did. Yeah. I thought out of all the videos, his had the the best. It was the most structured video. Like it flowed nicely. Like you said, he went and went to audio right away. That's important because that's all of our concerns mm -hmm. for Genesis is does it do audio properly? He jumped into that right away and then he flowed nicely into other topics and he didn't diverge from those topics. Some other videos were, I felt, all over the place and his was very structured. That's all my notes for, for his. <clears throat> uh, he... He did, I think he also was one of the few people that did a decent job of showing the dither blending stuff. Mm, yes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I got for him. Let's jump to... Uh, let's jump to... Let's do a bad one now. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, there weren't many that were... Yeah, none there, of them there were, were no, horrible. There were no Cinemassacre. Yeah, none of them were <laughs> Cinemassacre. Um, so I, I brought up Sega Heads, which I will give points to for being the shortest, because doing these is frankly <clears throat> torture when you have to watch the same features reviewed ten times. <clears throat> so his was yeah. only five After minutes After five long. videos, it's like, I get it, there are two DB9 ports in the front of the unit. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> I, was, I was screaming every time that... that <laughs> Inevitably came up at the start of every video. We got two, don't you know two controller the ports. Time? <laughs> don't you know it's the seventh time I've heard this today? <laughs> um, but yeah, let's. I mean, he he did point out that it, that it's a expensive unit. Um, he did not mention whether he paid for it or not. So I, I don't yeah. know. Um, I thought it was weird that he couldn't get the Master System adapter working. It was Maybe he didn't upgrade his firmware? So, yeah, he didn't upgrade his firmware, which to to his uh, credit, I, it's on, like, the, the shrink wrap in this tiny corner. There's a little sticker in the tiny corner of the shrink wrap that says, please update yes. your firmware to use SMS, which is like, I don't know, could have done a better job at that. I, I guess they started flashing these at the factory before that was ready and just knew. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that, yeah. So yeah, I guess it was the firmware update. I mean, my, my, uh, thought was that maybe it was put in backwards. I don't know how that thing fits in, but well, that's, uh, a, that's a good point though. If you look at, I mean, we're not supposed to review the unit, but the unit has a rectangular, cartridge slot as opposed to like a, yeah. a half circular one like like genesis does that's that's what i was noticing and, may, and that's maybe why i thought they have that fuse resistor that you could see through the clear plastic was just maybe in case somebody put it in backwards <clears throat> i don't know yeah i'm not sure i, I don't know the answer uh, to that. but i think it was just that he didn't update it sega head's uh, also one of the only guys that then mentioned the built-in game which i think is important because that game looks pretty fun i'm yeah I'm that, excited to try it out yeah that game looks pretty sweet but, um, he did test homebrew and he did test japanese cards which i thought was nice um i just had some aesthetic problems like i didn't like the transition effects he used in the video um and i did he's one of the other per i think there's someone else who defined lag as him not noticing it therefore it doesn't exist mm. which i I, I have no problem saying that people don't see any perceptible lag to them um that's totally fine with me but when you just say like as a general blanket statement then it's there's people who are more sensitive and people who aren't so saying that it kind of muddies everything and i, I don't like it when that's like he that. just played the fucking game. <laughs> All right, well, that guy's review is about three minutes long, so yeah, in kind, we'll move on from him to what I thought was a really great review, actually. It was uh, Spawn Waves. 
Yep. He, um, you know, mentioned right away that this the unit was sent to him. He did a uh, a nice unboxing. He didn't dwell on it. Just got oh. right to it. Yeah, it was live, quick. Live, live unboxing, yes. Um, quick and painless. Made comments about, how, like, how that system actually felt in terms of the weight and, and moving on a table and when you plug a cartridge in and all that type of stuff. Um, and he did a, the best uh, breakdown of the unit, like unscrewing it, tearing it down, showing what's in yeah. there. The teardown was really good, and again goes to the, your whole thing with the shaking gate. Like it was very mechanically, like mechanical engineering geared. To like he's talking about the screws that hold the cartridge slot, mm -hmm. and like where stuff is uh, placed, like in, in the controller ports. If if they break, they might they can be replaced, not the whole board. Like like little things like that, I thought was awesome. And then it got to the weight at the bottom too, which was yeah. Yeah. cool to see. Yeah, I think that's something that um, may go unappreciated, but it, it's important. Like the screws that hold in the cartridge connector, for example, like that's a that's a a touch that you know can make or break the system in the long run. And so it's nice to see that called out. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the thing I liked, but then I did not like after a few seconds, was I, I liked how he's navigating the menu with the dual camera setup where you see him pressing the buttons. Mm -hmm. But he had it in the wrong corner, and he was blocking all the checkboxes. So he was checking things like I I couldn't really follow what he was doing because his window was blocking it. So the, uh, I, I kind of wish the window was either a little smaller or in the bottom right corner where it wasn't blocking anything. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a a missed but, opportunity, I think. But I thought the side effect is, of that is that he was you were getting his first time impression of the menu navigation, whereas others they have the chance to. To film or to capture their menu navigation and then voice over it. Yeah, but, but we were getting his first impressions, which which I thought was important. Yeah, that was good because then you you follow with him like where confusing stuff is, um, and it, because it's not intuitive where everything in the menu is. Yeah, and it, it was despite that, despite like seeing it fresh, I, I think he kept it to the right amount of me, uh, menu navigation again. He didn't, like, dwell on, you know, number of horizontal pixel. You know, yeah. it was the right amount for, for most people. Um, I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to see a great breakdown of the unit, um, Spawn Wave, I think. Well, he's the only one out of ten that actually opened it up, though, right? Uh, well, that, uh, GameSec <laughs> kind of did. Oh, uh, GameSec and My Life in Gaming also showed internal board picks, but yeah. he actually was he like, it here out. it is, yeah. Yeah. lift the rubber out to get to the screws, take it out, and then talk about the internal screws and stuff. Because he's the only video that we actually saw the underside of the board. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's an additional flash chip and there's some level converters down there, which I thought was important to, to see, but... I'm I'm glad we got that because, like you said, it was the only video that had that. Uh, let's see. Tested the Sega CD. With, I mean, that, yeah, that's pretty pretty much all my notes on that one. Uh, that, that, yep. that review definitely gets a a, a big thumbs up for me. Um, let's see, Handlebar Gamer. Handlebar I, Gamer. He was the only one, I think, that mentioned specifically he was not given a review unit and paid for it. Yeah. And, and he's shipping. <laughs> yeah. He's, well, he's Canadian too, right? So he, he made a big deal, justifiably, about the cost of the unit. Um, $400, all said and done, is what he said. That's Canadian though, right? Yeah, that's what it comes out to, yeah. Okay. When, you, when you convert all the currencies and the duties and the brokerage fees and the shipping and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> How much is 400 US? I think the conversion is like somewhere around 75 cents. Okay. It's 300 US. Okay. 
I like that. <laughs> Modern Vintage Gamer sent us a super chat for five bucks. He said, thanks for the review. I'll wire the rest of the video <laughs> later as we discuss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like this guy already. <clears throat> Good stuff. Um, so Handlebar Funny Gamer stuff. had, the, had the, the, the relatively slow unboxing. Not a huge fan of that. But th I think that follows the pace of all his videos, though. He's... Is very very methodical and 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 slowly paced with everything else, so I, it's not surprising either. But yeah, what I have written down is that I had the video on two x speed, and I thought it was on normal speed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Ron. Yeah. I'm, I thought the video was pretty good though. Like, uh, aside from the slower pace, I mean, uh, he... I like. He mentioned he was talking about the audio settings, and he said there were so many audio settings that it was too much for him, right? It was confusing. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with that. Looking at the audio mm -hmm. menu, it looks like a mess. But yeah. they, you only get that menu, right? If you hit click the advanced. Yeah. But who's not going to click advanced? There's going to be a lot of people who just jump in, I would yeah. say. That, that's that that's my uh rule if is if you're gonna have a lot of extra settings hide, hide it in, hide them in an advanced menu and someone who explicitly wants access to them just has to click something to make that happen yeah that's fair um yeah i still think like the menu is just the advanced menu is kind of organized goofy and and i agree but um yeah, Handlebar was one of those people who said at the outset that the focus for him was going to be on audio and not video. And I, I appreciated that because, I mean, how yeah. many goddamn video comparisons can, can you make at this point? Like, it's it's cool for Genesis to focus on, on the audio replication. Um, and Because he got his from actually buying it and it just shipping in time uh, that... He even mentioned when he's going through the menus, like, oh, My Life in Gaming is video covered. Yeah, he this. did that. He filmed that yesterday. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh -huh. um, um, you were talking earlier, Nick, about uh, one of the fonts being not very really legible. Like that was Gamer. Yeah, it was Steve. Oh, Steve. Ron actually talks about that. He says, you know, he was too old to read that smaller font. Yeah. So he showed, you know, you got to switch it to the uppercase. So it sounds it sounds like it ships with the smaller font. I couldn't tell because it sound some people sounded like oh this is their first time through the menu when it and then it was the big font. I, I don't know which one it ships with. Yeah, I don't I don't think they're <laughs> really the first time through the the menu. Right, right. I'm just saying that Modern they, Vintage they, Gamer they, just commented about it, by the way. He said it was the first thing he switched when, when he powered it up. So I, I think it was shipping with the, the default as being crap, small, oh, okay. that people can't read. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Handlebar Gamer was the only uh, one, besides one other, that mentioned the uh, the volume slider would have been a cool feature yeah i mean I, I totally get it going into the menu and adjusting a digital thing like you're gonna do that once and never again whereas you got that little slider thing you know that's a quick fix but i, I to also totally get why yeah I mean, it's a, a huge extra cost on your system well let me ask you sorry getting kind of off track but would you be okay with like a volume knob like one of those disc things no. No, i know i think it's Either gotta be the slider it has to be the slider or or digital yeah I, yeah i mean the disc just feel it would feel like a cop out to me yeah but but adding moving parts adds to a lot of to the cost right so oh, yeah. yeah understand why they didn't do it um, and the, yeah, the only thing I, I thought it, he could have shortened up the video by not going through all of the menu options um, one by one. But, he, but 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 he did do it like quickly. I was kind of yeah. impressed with how yeah. he was like, okay, this eh, no, this is not worth it. No, like like just like really just going through it to see what's 
there and what's useful at first glance, like sight reading the menu. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and Ron, Handlebar Gamer is one of the only ones that doesn't mention the built-in game. Ah, yeah, that's right. Got to mention that game, man. Come on. That's, yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's a key one of the feature. Things, that's one of the things I took notes on. But anyway, so, overall, still positive review. I liked it. Um, just watch it yes. at, at least up one and a half speed, and you'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> what? I got time. I don't. I don't have infinite time, man. I uh, actually watched some videos at at two x speed because I was running out of time. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I was I was cramming them in because plus I had to put together that intro and grab the screenshots of all the people. I mean, it was. It was close. Let's see. Let's go to uh, Mr. John Hancock next. John Hancock. This uh, review I ended up liking a lot better than I ex was expecting to. Like I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, yep. He mentions he was sent the review copy. He does a pretty brisk unboxing. His box, uh, unboxing actually shows the instruction manual, which I like to see. I don't yeah. care if it's a small, dinky thing. I think it's cool when yeah. there's an instruction manual. He's the only one that showed the instruction manual. Yeah, it's a, an instruction manual that shows how you're supposed to like assemble, even if it may be straightforward for most people. Like, It shows how yeah. to assemble the Sega CD and how to use the, the Sega Master System adapter. So. I think so. John Hancock is has a like a full set U.S. Genesis collection, right? So he was able to throw those games at it that usually have compatibility issues. Mm -hmm. Yep, <clears throat> and he was able to test like a bunch of different controller variants. He tested the Retron Five adapter. Like this guy's got so much shit in his house yeah. that he can just do. The, some of the most in-depth testing so that's really awesome to see like if you're curious to see like weird um products being thrown up against the thing it, it's pretty cool well, lots he, of lots of hacks and homebrews he threw yep. yeah threw on there i'm i'm the, john hancock just, i don't watch his videos usually he looks just he looks so much like a happy about everything kind of guy like i enjoyed i think the video could have been devoid of any kind of information and i was still <laughs> liked it it just looks, <laughs> he just looks like a, a guy that's so much fun to hang out with and yeah he um he was one of the few people that to call out that you should like update your the firmware the first thing you do when you get it too which that kind of surprised me that it didn't seem to be like a thing that as many people made a deal about um let's see he did a good good menu navigation i thought hooked up to the sega cd and played stuff um, i thought it was hilarious that during his menu navigation he commented on the led settings that you can do uh -huh. and he was really excited about that it's like oh i love these led settings <laughs> like he was happy about that yeah i mean he he likes this shit, man. He geeks out on tech. It's cool. He did a, a pretty good, like, 30-second review of the packing game. Mm -hmm. Talked about, like, you know, kind of like how it was a mashup between some other games. So people kind of get a feel of what to expect with the packing game. Um, did a lot of model... Uh, he he was the only. Is he the only one who'd used the Model One Sega CD, besides My Life in Gaming? Uh, but he, I don't well, know. He's testing his games. Well, he's testing his games to say to see which, if it works well, he was on a Model One Sega CD, which I don't think the other ones were. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. To be honest. I, I don't fully remember everything watching all that stuff at one and a half speed. <laughs> but uh... um, I, I don't. He, when he was talking about the sound, I don't think it was um, 
the the comparisons and explanation on on the the sound settings was not that good. It was very rushed. Um, I thought the worst part with the sound was he was trying to show off the FM sound for the Master System games, mm-hmm. and he switches it to PSG only. But it's like in the background, like barely audible. And so I thought that that was just it didn't come through at all. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, less than half the people did a, did a good job with the audio, but yeah, he had a nice uh, pro con thing at the end of the mm-hmm. video. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, not not many people did that either. Like they didn't get to the, like, should you buy this? <clears throat> Me and Renee were yeah. talking about this uh, earlier. That, yeah, uh, that's right. It would be nice to kind of summarize, like, when should you buy this and when shouldn't you? Like, does this make sense? Like, a nice summary would yep. be nice. And That's the whole point of the review, right? People are at hopefully watching this to determine whether or not they're going to buy the unit. All right, uh, let's move on to... So, yeah, I'm giving John Hancock a thumbs up. Yep. Um, to this does not compute, which oh god, probably my least favorite review, frankly. That's that's putting it nicely. I will call it the worst review. <laughs> um, I didn't think it was that bad. So, so my was... notes are: he's the only one to uh, complain about the use of micro USB. I think. Yeah, he's the one that said it should have been USB C, right? Which is I think is a fair fair complaint. Um, he explicitly says this is n- not an emulator. And then goes, that. goes <laughs> off into as we So oh, yeah, I, I I noted this. This was ridiculous. Yeah, you, you go for it. <clears throat> he says it's not an I emulator. I probably got it in my notes too. <laughs> he says, it's not an emulator. The FPGA reproduces the Mega Drive's hardware at the electrical level. Because apparently when you run software, it has nothing to do with being electrical. But Right, he said you to, to make the, this thing work, you need to know the chips in the system. Yeah. Well, when you make Requires... a software emulator, you also need to know how the chips in the system work. Yeah, I noted exactly requires a deep understanding of all the chips you know to make an fpga yeah well (laughs) somebody do not allow bu to watch that video because he will fucking lose it (laughs) everyone knows that if you're writing a software emulator i mean microsoft has done all the work for you all you do is just include genesis.h and there you go (laughs) that's right yeah Um, um, he did say he was sent the review copy like right up front, so that's one plus that I have. But uh, well, I, I, mean, I just the, felt the, like in general he he talked about um, a lot of features and didn't really go into showing them much, other than the frame rate um, piece where he actually showed like the tearing if you use one of those modes. Uh, but otherwise, I felt like it was just kind of all glossed over. It, it... Um, yeah, like he would tell you about something, but he wouldn't show it. I, I got some some positive things here. He he mentions all the colors, which was not mentioned on every review. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had really nice close-ups of all the connectors. So, like, you actually see the the etched writing above each connector and what it said which i kind of wanted to see what they wrote above the the micro usb and the hdmi port um he'd had a really good explanation of analog tv tolerance with the hertz Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah it's not i think was probably the best explanation of that out of all the videos and he he did point out the headphone knob it was actually because i watched it before uh john hancock that the headphone slider he was the first one that i saw to point that out um 
I did have a couple of problems too. <laughs> you guys don't mind me continuing. Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. for it. Yeah, he did say he mentioned no perceptible lag as an absolute when he was talking about the controller. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like I mentioned before, it, that's I, not an absolute. Yeah, yeah it's a, I did not experience perceptible lag. Right. Is what right, it should exactly. be. Yeah. That's how it should be said. Um, and this thing kind of really bothered me where he used the one piece digi key pricing to justify oh, yeah. the cost yeah. on FPGA. Where there's no way analog's paying that price. <laughs> So, so when I look at the at the uh, emulator and the need to know the chips and the DigiKey stuff, it, it, it seems like he was grasping a little too far into re- regions that he didn't fully understand. He sh- if he stayed a little more in his comfort zone, which I think it would have turned out a lot better because mm-hmm. he has really nice shots of everything. He has some of the best aesthetic-looking video. Um, so that's pretty much all I had. Cool. Renee, yeah, I know. No, I had noted the, the DigiKey thing too. I thought that was awkward to go and show a one piece price. Yeah. It just it unit. Show, shows you yeah. don't understand really the volume yeah. pricing. I don't know. Yeah. We don't, we don't have an idea of, of how many units were, were actually produced, but it's definitely not one. So. And, and FPGAs are weird too. Like the, the vendors, they tell you don't, base the stuff on the digikey pricing that's just for protos and stuff come to our sales team and because the digi don't base your design cost on the digikey one piece pricing you need to come to us because it's way different yeah Yeah. all right let's jump to a positive review um well I i thought that one wasn't negative i thought it was mixed it was yeah i mean yeah Whatever. I, <laughs> moving on to GameSack, which um, I think is all of our favorite review, actually. I like, like Joe's a, the best, yeah. Overall, yeah. Yeah, he did the, you know, the right length of video, super funny, awesome video editing techniques. I kind of mentioned this uh, earlier, that he did show like a breakdown of the cartridge using a little cool like stop motion video which i thought was awesome um yes i like that That but that that's let's say his trademark i think he does that for most of the console videos right he'll have a stop motion thing but it's good (laughs) but you know i get the sense that joe's was the best video because he doesn't particularly want this device from what i get from the uh from the video and and seeing some of his posts on Twitter too, he felt it was rushed and whatnot. So he he didn't go in with a oh my god, this is going to be an amazing device attitude. He went in with a, like a scrutinizing, I'm going to find out what's wrong with this device attitude. Yeah, I mean, and he didn't find that much wrong with it, but he he did have like a critical, yeah, critical eye to it. Um, yeah, and you can tell just from the words he uses, right? He doesn't say it's a clone console. He says it's a fake Genesis, right? Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> negative. he's negative about I, it. I love how he came out the door with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then then he goes in and at the end, if you follow through to the end of the video, it's like, yeah, it's a fake Genesis, but it's a pretty damn good fake Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the fart sound effects everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked, he was, he was another one like Spawn Wave that like, did a wiggle test and you know tried to, to to mess with it. Um, I thought, at least in terms of like navigating the menu, his was probably the best for that. I mean, if you re- want like the right level of menu navigation, um, I really liked his. Um, I liked how he showed uh, how to use the the audio, you know, low pass filter and the the, yeah. the follow the cutout rate to get the right sound for the Model 2 Genesis. He talked about had, the audio panning. Mm-hmm. I, I had one problem with the menu navigation where he didn't mention that that busy toggle for the YM3438 was not in the audio menu. It's in the system mm. menu, which it just, I don't know why Analog put that there, but I thought it should have been at least briefly mentioned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He did a, also a really good job of showing the dither stuff. 
2 I have down and of course went into all the SMS and Sega CD stuff. Yeah, his was the best um, FM comparison for Master System. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he actually noted that there were the some emulation was off. Yeah. yeah. He knows that stuff really well. I think he has a full SMS US collection, if I'm not mistaken. When I when I built the FM power base converter originally, he tested it with all FM games. So he's got a lot of them and he knows it. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he can spot some of those differences, like just pop in a cartridge and be like, yep, that doesn't sound right. And, you know, I, I don't know, that's, that's an impressive skill. You mentioned that it was overall, in general, funny and entertaining, but my favorite uh, gag mm -hmm. was the uh, when he's talking about how if you do a firmware update, all your settings get wiped. And he wrote out all his settings yeah. on the piece of paper and actually yeah. took the time to write out yeah. all the settings. Yeah. Uh, I thought that an extra little effort was well worth it. That was my favorite little gag. Or, or when he's showing the um, the hardware, and then he so, and he says, and here's an SD card that will enable you to play pirated games very soon. Yeah, very soon. <laughs> he was very yeah. blunt about it. I mean, Spawn, Spawnway mentioned that as well, but it wasn't as blunt and entertaining as yeah. when Joe did it. Um, his his packing game review was the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That like he explained it well. Mm -hmm. Spent a good amount of time on talking about the packing game. I, I thought that was very worthwhile. Hmm. I think that's that's all I got. I mean, I, I really think he should pony up the eighty-four bucks and buy Tanglewood, and play <laughs> it on there. But you know, that's probably my only criticism. My last note for for Game Stack is that at the end he goes through telling you. Uh, is the device worth it? Should you get it or not? Right? And he says, you know, if you've got a, a Genesis and an upscaler, you probably don't need this device, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was good. Cool. Um, let's see, we got two more. I cannot close out on re res, so we're doing that one next. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's re res. So re res spent a. a ridiculous amount of time on the controller after which... he mentioned that he was sent stuff just to be clear <laughs> but yeah he spent a lot of time on that 8-bit 8-bit dudo as joe called it <laughs> but, but i actually some some of the things i liked like i didn't know there was two different kinds of those controllers oh really uh, and and i didn't know that there were shoulder buttons on the controllers he was the only one to mention the shoulder buttons. Mm -hmm. That's right. I did. I did note that this was my fifth re review uh, b watching, and that was the first time that I learned that there were shoulder buttons on the controller. Although at that point, I was already mad that he had been talking about the controller <laughs> for too long. Yeah, it was like if, it did feel like that kind of just belonged in a separate video, and you could just like do a quicker overview and link people, <clears throat> and then you can play the views game. You got. To, twice the number of videos to, to rack up those sweet ad bucks on. Um, at, yeah. <clears throat> so, so the thing that I thought was the funniest about the re video was that at timestamp 1236, he calls it the Sega SG and not the Mega SG. Mm -hmm. I noticed that too. Yeah. <laughs> I he, backed it up a few times. I'm like, what, what did he say? <laughs> his only comparison was to composite video, though, on on a Genesis, which, like, I don't know, throw in some other options there. Like, the, you're talking to a community, a lot of people have spent a lot of money on a lot of different products. Um, I don't know, it, well, it just feels like I'm, it, I'm... It, it's deserving of more than just, this looks better than composite video on Sega Genesis. I... That That's a good point. I'll push back a little bit that we don't know his particular audience. And that he might have a better feel for it. And it's like Metal Jesus. Uh, he Maybe he made his decision on composite and showing the pound cable based on what he knows about his audience. I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, Metal Jesus showed, like, four different options. He at least, like, went through the scale. Like, that, 
That's regardless of what his audience is, even if it's like the most casual person who's only ever been exposed to uh, the Walmart at games flashback, I mean, I still think it's worth showing that this is not like the most magical thing ever to have happened in the universe. Like other things produce good quality video on a Sega Genesis. I don't know. Yeah. That was, that was my complaint. <clears throat> so when he's comparing audio model so two he, yeah he compared it to a model two which which has a which is low pass filtered and then the mega sg audio he didn't put any filters on it and then because his mega sg audio had a whole bunch of high frequencies in it he called it a big leap in audio quality when in fact what he was hearing was a difference in low pass filter cutoffs yeah he's hearing that two different me. audio chips yeah that annoyed me, and if Ace is in the chat, he's probably fuming about that right now. So. <laughs> uh, he did test some stuff that he knew caused trouble on clones, but <clears throat> that was good. Um, Sonic and Knuckles. He mentions the DAC. I don't know how many other people mentioned the supposed one day to come out DAC. I mean, they were advertising that for the Super NT, so I don't know what the deal is. I think um, in the manual it says like 2019. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't think he covered the menus nearly enough. I think it was that was all just glossed over. I did like the overview at the beginning with the colors and the general mechanical design. Um, the other thing I really liked was that he explained in in. Uh, enough detail why the 32x doesn't work in that how he contacted analog and they explained it to him and he relayed that information um i think that was worth explaining and he did a good job with that mm. and then he did use some unique sega cd games that nobody else used yeah cool renee anything else no, the DAC, the low pass filter, that's it for, for re res. Canadian Fuzzy asked what's coming first, the analog DAC or the HD Retrovision Dreamcast cable? It's a fair question. I don't know. <laughs> if I had to put money on it, the DAC? Put your money in Keptris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the analog Dream DC is going to be out first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. We still got till 2072, right? <laughs> All right. Sorry, Last I had one. to pick one one person for the the picture, so I went with I went with Corey because I thought I did try last time, but I, I don't remember. Um, but uh, I, I was able to more quickly find it unglamorous picture of of Corey anyway um so yeah what'd you guys think of the the my life and gaming review i think it was um as expected the uh <clears throat> the most in-depth on on menu options like if you really care about the the tweaks the advanced settings getting everything to um you know OCD levels of accuracy. Like th this is obviously the the review to watch. Yeah, I th I thought it was borderline an instructional video as opposed to like a review video. Yeah, it was basically their advanced instruction manual. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the analog got for free. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, for sending units to them, but. Um, my the, biggest complaint uh, about the My Life and Gaming video was having to see Bob on there. I thought that was terrible. <laughs> like, I, I, I yeah. have him as a note as well. And then like, and Bob mentions the triple bypass, and he doesn't even mention me. What the yeah, hell? What the hell, man? Get out of here, Bob. Jesus. I, I, I thought the worst part of that was, like, it looked like he was wearing, like, a, a smock in, like, a barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looked like because of the angle that he would, it was filmed at. Um, so, yeah. I liked um, 
Something I didn't mention about GameSec, but uh, so both GameSec and My Life in Gaming did a good job at this. Is they did a really good job at showing the different um, frame buffer settings, mm-hmm. right? And My Life in Gaming obviously did the best one, where they actually had the three different screens going up to ten minutes to show this is the difference that no one's going to notice, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was really. I, I should mention. I, I need to recuse myself on this because I did. Uh, review a, a early version of their script. Mm-hmm. So I, I did have some... Conflict of interest? <laughs> conflict of interest, yeah. I, I mean, I, they, they think I'm helpful, but I don't think I was very <laughs> helpful. Um, uh, Ace and Artemio did most of the work. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, I also have down that they did a really good um, job of showing kind of the interpolation stuff in depth and they are one of the maybe the only people unless I'm forgetting that actually like called out Kevtris and had video of him like kind of showed him working on stuff like I don't know I feel like if Analog is going to market their products as this is designed by Kevtris. So, like, I think he's a, an important aspect of it, so it's good to to give him the shout out. Um, there is a some someone might have not have mentioned him explicitly, but there was like a an about menu that said his name, mm-hmm. like he, uh, electrical and FPGA design Kevin Horton, like in the help menu or whatever. But it wasn't pointed out. It just I just saw it. Like showing up. Mm-hmm. I think I think my life in gaming was the only one that mentioned that the Mega SG is based on a non TMSS Genesis. Mm. They explain to you what the difference is and what the compatibility compatibility issues are with TMSS versus non TMSS. <clears throat> yep. Uh, you yeah, the, you mentioned the interpolate, like they showed the shimmering effects mm-hmm. that get eliminated with the interpolation. Um, they, the only ones that mentioned like corner cases of weird stuff that might happen, like the limited range, RGB range, not locking in unless you reboot the console. Uh, their video production is... Yeah, I mean, real, look, if you uh, want like the most number of comparisons to the most number of options... Well, I'm just talking about the just the, the aesthetic of. Yeah, you know, I mean they're able artistic. to put yeah put things together in yeah. a way that I, I think that's part he, of the aesthetic, though, right? Like, but I, I'm saying outside of that, like there was this crazy Master System shot mm. with all the Master System games and the wood paneling in the background. Mm-hmm. It, it only lasted like. Maybe two seconds. Yeah, probably took like an hour to like get right. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> to get right. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> For two a, like a slider video. shot. There's a slider shot. It was like a slow zoom in. Yeah. And I liked I liked their demonstration of the ladder effect because we'll be we'll be completely honest. Nobody understands watching these videos what the ladder effect is, and I like that they don't really try to bother to describe it. They'll just they'll just show you. Mm-hmm. Here's the ladder effect. Here's what it sounds like on and off. And here's what it's supposed to sound like on the original console. I thought I thought that was brilliant. It was, it was a good way to approach it. Mm-hmm. One thing I liked, which is kind of biased about, because I've kind of wanted to talk about this on the our normal podcast, was the uh, the fact that if you consider like Dreamcast aspect ratios, then you need to consider everything might have had a wrong aspect ratio. And they talked about like the Sonic like loop was like an oval, even on a CRT, the, the moon in uh, Castlevania bloodlines shows up as an it's historically on all the old display devices shows up as a oval. Mm-hmm. So they just mentioned that this is how it's always shown up, but we like it on this setting where it's shows up as a circle and it doesn't introduce any interpolation effects. So I, I thought that was really cool um, because I'm, I want to talk about it eventually. <laughs> yeah. 
<clears throat> but my, I, I, and again, I mean, I know they're in the chat and I love their videos, but I don't have 42 minutes and nine seconds to, to watch uh, a long video about a review. So I, I understand who the audience is for my life in gaming, but it's, it's a video for a review of a device that I thought was too long for me. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on what you're after. Uh, again, like if you want detailed information about every setting in a menu, and like as you said, there's an audience that that wants that, um, and I and I appreciate uh, getting that. That they're they're the people to watch, hands down. They also yeah. do the best comparisons between, like the way they. You know, going back to what Steve said with the aesthetic, the way they put shots on the screen so that you can, you know, I can't think of one directly from that video, but I just, you know, in particular remember one of their videos where they have a shot of like four different um, NESs with Castlevania um, is what I'm thinking. And they, they just crop things well and they, they do a great job of, of showing differences in in products so I, I think if you if you really want comparisons across the board and not just to composite video yeah. uh, they're th always the people to, that i would go to for sure well their video becomes the reference video like we yeah. saw in handlebar gamers video yeah where he goes into the menu it's like uh oh, my life in gaming covers yeah, this. yeah just just go watch their settings yeah um yeah so, I, I mean, they, they spent the extra time there, so the other people don't. Uh, but I, I do agree, it was a lot of stuff. And when we're starting to go through all the menu settings, I kind of was like, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, but that's just because you, you don't need the, the hand-holding walkthrough on menu settings. That's probably... Yeah, that's all it is. I mean, I, I remember... For the AVS, like I listen to that, like I'm just like, hey, what do Mark, what do Mark and uh, Corey say about what the AVS settings look best? And I just throw on their video, and that's what my AVS has been set to ever since. <laughs> I don't want to have to think about it; just have them tell me. So, cool. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got for them. Great job, boys! Another thumbs up video. That was in their video. What's up? Hello? Hi. Right. Hello. No. Yeah. I don't know. You guys cut out for a sec. All right. Uh, oh, no. Cameras are all of a sudden flipping out. It lasted until this long. All right. You guys are back. All right. Let's go with the awards. It's time for the award show. Awards. All right. We're given the best overall video. As we already said, to to GameSack. GameSack. Winner of the best overall video. The best overall breakdown of the console is going to Spawn Wave. Congratulations for opening it up, showing all sides of the board. Yeah. Next up, we have Best Handlebar Mustache Award. And that goes to John Hancock. Rumble. John Hancock. Of course. Of course. The best botched FPGA explanation <laughs> award, which I think will become an annual <laughs> award as Analog puts out more products. That's going to This Does Not Compute. A well deserved award. The best repeated This Is Not Emulation mantra award goes to Metal Jesus Rocks. <laughs> That's right. Hardware-based emulation. <laughs> the best keeping it short award goes to Sega Head, who clocked in at around five minutes. And the best twice as long as every other video award goes to My Life in Gaming. Thank you, guys. Hey. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all we got. Um, who, but who was... who is who is the objective winner, like, according to Mr. YouTube? Oh, who has the most views? 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, oh. Who, who's the real winner here? I have to search. Yeah, so, yeah, take a quick search. I would have um, said John Hancock for the handlebar mustache, but... No, we all know that the only thing that matters is how many YouTube videos you got. YouTube views. Let's see. Probably Metal that's, Jesus. That's all that really matters. So, uh, I mean, so I know we just it spent... It looks like Metal Jesus. Eight, Metal Jesus has 87,000 views. Well, he's the winner. He's the winner. Metal Jesus wins at the Best Video Award because he has the most views. Yeah, so uh, I think the second closest looks like Game Sack with 56K, My Life in Gaming with 42. So there you have it. Go by number of views. That's how you determine it. By the way, I'm I'm very disappointed that Lon TV got bobbed. Yeah. uh, (laughs) By not getting his unit, getting a unit. Uh, uh, that was because he was my favorite last year. Uh huh. And uh, you know he just got bobbed. Yeah, total total <laughs> bobbing. You know, actually, we you know we're giving out these awards to the best videos, but I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna preemptively say I'm gonna predict that the best video down the road is gonna be the DF retro video on the Mega SG. Yeah, it's too bad that John didn't get his out in time. Um, he does great work. Um, probably the the only one who I consider on par with my life in gaming in terms of production quality and thoroughness. Like, yeah, those are your two. But yeah, that's uh, that's it. I think. You guys got anything else? Did we miss any super chats that we need to respond to? Uh, I wasn't even paying attention. Alex Abbas said, here's a super chat. Thanks for doing the podcast. And Matt Clausen sent a, this is my super chat, super chat. Well, thanks for supporting the show, everyone. We appreciate that. Yeah. All gets so we, reinvested look, into my yacht, and none of these guys see any of it, but that's cool. We had planned on, on me doing a, an unboxing of my Mega SG at the end, but fortunately... I got a delivery notice paper today, and I have to pick it up at the post office tomorrow, so that kind of screwed our plans. Yeah, that's all right. So what do we? I got the next best thing though, the at games. Yeah. <laughs> How I mean, the at games does have more pack in titles than the Mega SG, so more is better. More is better. <laughs> Just like the views. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, everyone. I think we're gonna call well, it there. Unless oh, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't explain uh, where the rest of the crew is. Bob is. I mean, it's ten o'clock. Bob is like blacked out from drinking at this point already. Um, Voltar is in the chat, so he can explain himself <clears throat> where he is. Voltar has <laughs> contracted polio lately. I think so. <laughs> Basically, that this type of show requires a lot of homework. Yeah. <laughs> Voltar cannot be assigned homework. That's not his forte. Because last time he did the Super NT review, but he didn't actually watch any of the videos, right? He, he watched did like a good, half of them. Yeah, he did a good job of uh, pretending. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't know where Bob is. He's out and passed out in some alley after drinking at the 15th bar of the night so cool anything else all right yeah unless anybody has questions um yeah i'm good well we're looking looking forward to doing this in 2020 for the analog what do you think 3do 3D. The Turbo yeah. TG. The Turbo PC. I don't know. I'm going with the analog Jaguar. We'll see. The see who comes out on top. R Zone. The right, Atari right. Jag. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Peace. All right. See you guys. <laughs>